it's the wild west out there with this you know there's no blueprint and how to really make it sound great creatively is still you know anyone's guess at this point my name is nick Zanante. i also go by nick zinn i am a songwriter producer based out of Long Island, New York. My name's Ariel Borjo. I'm a mix engineer based here in New York. Uh, I've been making records for about 25 years. The consumer is listening. They have their AirPod Pros, right? You have your setting. It Let's say you, you don't even realize, but it's defaulted to spatial audio, right? Your first impression of a song might be the Atmos mix because it's already recognizing it. So if you don't hit that impact, the listener is going to go right to the next song and be like, this, this is, this isn't cool. Like it doesn't have that same, I don't get emotionally attached to it. Well, especially on like Apple music, if you click on a song, they almost always play the Atmos version first, which is for me, was a terrifying thing because most of the things that I've heard on Atmos, I was not the most thrilled with <laughs> like they usually i would always end up being like oh man the stereo sounds a little bit better than this so to my in my mind i was like i want to make sure everybody hears the best possible version of this song the atmos mix needs to be at least as good if not better i mean better is always what we're achieving for you know this is again getting to know the process and where our heads are at because atmos again is new for us but it still has the basic concept that I need the impact and the weight to hit you and the vocals, the drums and the bass. And then everything else, you kind of look at it like, OK, the verses, you know, in stereo, I usually do things where I bring things in more. And then the chorus, I widen things out. So the verse guitars are here and then here. But now all of a sudden you, you can layer things back here. So maybe the verse guitars are more here. And then all of a sudden the the chorus is you put here, you lift some of the guitars up this way, you have a, I mean, the, the sky's the limit what you're doing. Even on Stomp, after I had the mix settled exactly where I wanted to, then Nick would take control. And at this point, I would be able to just kind of scroll through here. And because of being able to control everything remotely and be able to stream through audio movers, a lot of it was thinking about the instruments and how do I treat these elements as if they are living things, you know, in the room. Symbols, for example, when you hear a symbol, you hear the crash and then you hear a simmer. So in my mind, I was like, well, when you picture crashes, they're usually the highest part on a drum kit. They're always the highest. So in my mind, I was like, bring the height up high. And as it simmers, just kind of have that trickle down in the mix. And then a lot of it was just thinking about the elements in the production and finding how to make those elements feel musical and bring you to places versus just like, I'm going to put a guitar like over there because I can. Even with Stomp, which we're in the middle of working on now, the Atmos version, you know, I'm starting to take things and being like, okay, I know Nick's going to put that in an object. So I'm doing that already without doing the movements yet. And maybe when we get to the third song, in the fourth song, I'll start moving things and Nick will be like, oh, that sounds great, but I'm just going to make it trickle down more, move things a little bit further. And that's what's exciting about working in Atmos right now is nobody can tell you anything because there's really no rules. Like everybody's still trying to figure it out. And I think that's exciting. It's almost like when stereo first came out. And I, I do believe personally that this will be the future. I think that once this is all figured out, stereo is going to be the new mono. I believe that.